This is episode 15 of Magic and the Law of Attraction with Madame Bamita. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Madame Pamita, and you're listening once again to Magic and the Law of Attraction, the podcast where you'll learn how to transform your life in magical ways to make it the very best that it can be. Well, hello, my lovelies. I am so sorry that I missed bringing you episodes over the last few weeks and not even a quick message from me to tell you what was going on. Well, I'm sure if you were listening to the last few episodes, you know that my father was in home hospice care and at the end of an amazing 95 year journey in this lifetime. As you can guess, the care for him got more intense as time went on and took up more of my time and energy. And I had to set aside some of the things that I really love, like doing this podcast, while I focused on him. On May 8th, he went to sleep, and in the early morning hours, he very peacefully slipped away onto his next adventure. He left with no distress and no pain, truly at peace. I am so very grateful for that. We had his funeral later in the week, and it was really a celebration of his life and what he meant to us. So while I have to admit that I miss him every day, I know that he is truly in pure positive energy. In fact, I had a dream about him the other night where he and I were at an electronics swap meet, something that we used to do in life. And the dream was so happy and he was doing so well. I know it was just his way of reaching out to me and telling me, that he was well and happy. And in knowing that, I myself am at peace with him moving into the realm of spirit. Thank you so much for being so patient with this slight pause in the podcast, but I'm getting caught up with all the work that got put on hold while I was caring for him. And we're back to our regular schedule now. I'm excited to say that I'm going to be bringing you some amazing episodes over the coming weeks. There have been some fantastic questions coming in, And I'm so excited to share them with you. Anyway, let's jump into this week's question. So Lachelle from North Ridgeville writes, how do you properly dispose of spell work once completed? For example, candle magic after the candle burns out. Thank you so much for sending in this question, Lachelle. I'm really happy that she submitted this question, but I'll bet you guys can't guess why. The reason I love this question is not only is it a fantastic question, but it also is probably the number one magical coaching question that I get asked by my clients. And there are actually so many questions that fall under this heading. What do I do with candle remains? What do I do with petition papers? Basically, what do I do with the leftovers after my spell is done? And this question makes sense. Go online, go into your spell books, look at my YouTube videos, look at any spell, and 99% of the time, you're going to see spell directions that have no information on what to do with the remains. The spells in my videos and on my pages are included in that. We, as authors and teachers, just sort of assume that you naturally know what to do with the remains. Like if you're reading a recipe for cooking a lasagna, the author just assumes that you know how to serve it, put away the leftovers and wash the pan afterward, right? We all know that, but we all grow up around other people who cook. We see people serving and putting away leftovers and that's the difference. Magic isn't something that most of us grow up around seeing how it's done, like washing a pan. I've been doing magical work for decades, and I learned by being around other magical women. But not everyone is so lucky. And I think really the responsibility is on us as teachers and authors to guide you guys in the most thorough way possible. Those of you who don't have mentors and wise women or wise men around you, we can't just assume that you'll naturally know what to do with spell leftovers. So this episode, It's really about setting things right and letting you know some of the ways that I have used to work with spell remains so you won't have to wonder anymore. 
These aren't the only ways to deal with the leftovers, but they are some very tried and true methods that you can test out in your own magical practice and see if they work for you. Lachelle's question brings up the issue of candles specifically, but candles aren't the only things where there are leftovers. There are a lot more disposal issues in magic. And on today's episode, we're going to primarily talk about what to do with candle spells that are finished. But these disposal methods can apply to the remains of really any kind of magical work. Teas, sachets, baths, incense, herbs, petition papers, mojo bags, really anything. So since we have so much ground to cover, let's just jump right in. The first examples I'm going to be bringing up are particularly oriented toward candle spells, but again, they can really apply to any leftovers. So whether it's a petition paper or leftover herbs from a magical tea, you can still apply these same disposal methods. So if you've ever burned candles for spell work before, then you know that sometimes when we burn a candle for the spell, we can burn the wax completely and there are no leftovers left over. But if you've done a few spells like I have, you will start to see that much more often when burning candles, particularly figural candles, tapers, and more complex candle spells, it is almost inevitable that there is going to be at least some leftover melted wax. Not only wax, but in your more complex spells, there's probably going to be herbs, petition papers, maybe even some other artifacts that you've added to the spell and that are remaining once the spell has completed. And there are numerous ways to deal with these candle spell remains. So the first thing you have to do when deciding what to do with candle spell remains is to start by determining if your candle spell is meant to bring something in, like love, prosperity, luck, success, protection, and so on, or if your spell was meant to clear something out, like banishing, cleansing, breakup, hot foot, or cut and clear spell. Let's talk first about these clearing and cleansing spells. When you are doing a spell to get rid of something, you are working to get it out of your life. And if you are getting something out of your life, you don't want those leftover candle remains hanging around after the spell is complete. There are a few ways that you can deal with these remains, but all of them are about getting them out of your vicinity. First, the simplest way to dispose of the spell remains is to throw them in the trash. But if your candle spell was for something that you want to clear out, you really should solidify that getting rid of aspect by choosing how you are going to throw it out. Don't throw it away in your own kitchen garbage. Wrap it up, and you can wrap it up with wax paper or foil or regular paper, and then take it outside of your home. And don't throw it away in your own garbage can. Take it away from your property and throw it in someone else's garbage and not in your next door neighbor's trash can. Take that sucker far, far away from your home, if at all possible. Dump it in the bin, turn around to go home and don't look back. So dumping it in the trash is a really simple and effective way to finalize that kind of banishing spell. You can also get rid of your spell remains by burying them. But again, you don't want to bury banishing or clearing spells on your own property. Bury them far away from you. And if you really want to do some old time kind of work, bury them in a graveyard. If you want to step up your banishing work, a more traditional hoodoo way of getting rid of candle remains is to leave them at a crossroads. What is a crossroads? It's simply an intersection, a place where two roads cross. Now, I remember when I first started learning about crossroads work. In my mind's eye, I totally pictured a dusty rural country path that branches off with signposts pointing left, right, behind, and straight ahead, sort of like in the movie The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy meets the scarecrow at a crossroads. And it's really not for nothing that Dorothy meets him at a crossroads. One day we'll have to get and put an entire episode together just talking about all the cool symbolism in the Wizard of Oz books. But yes, I used to think that a crossroads where you would do magical work could only be that rural country path. Those old time dusty dirt paths, crossroads are very magical, but you don't have to venture out into the wilds to work at the crossroads. 
we have crossroads everywhere. A crossroads is any place where two roads cross. That means an intersection, any intersection, even a city street. So why a crossroad? What makes it magical? Well, crossroads are in between spaces. Think about what happens at a crossroads. Two different journeys meet. You have choices. Do I go left, right, or straight ahead? In the African-American hoodoo tradition, the crossroads are a place where you can do spiritual work to gain talents and gifts. In our day-to-day travels, we take crossroads for granted, but if you open up your magical awareness, you'll start to sense some open, moving energy at the crossroads. So why would we want to leave spell remains at a crossroads? Well, crossroads have moving energy. We can send that spell out in every direction, scatter it to the four winds as it were. This can be great for spells where you want to get rid of something, but it can also be great for spells where you want to call something to you and you want to send that message out all over the world. Like calling for prosperity from an unknown source or calling for a new lover that you haven't met yet. So what does it actually look like to leave spell remains at a crossroads? Whenever I leave something at the crossroads, I like to pack up all the remains in a little packet of some kind. It can be a paper bag, it can be a piece of paper, it can be some aluminum foil. Once you've got that packet together, you take that packet of remains to the center of the intersection. Okay, so now I'm going to be Captain Obvious here and say that you should probably pick a quiet intersection to do crossroads work. I don't recommend doing this work at the intersection of 7th Avenue and 42nd Street in New York City. If you're doing work in the crossroads, you want to be safe. So when you're doing work to get rid of something, pick a quiet and safe intersection that is far from your home. If you're doing work to bring something to you, Pick a quiet and safe intersection that's nearby. Take your little foil packet of your spell remains, drop them in the center of the intersection, turn around, and don't look back. That action of taking it to the center and not looking back is key. It's really a confidence thing. You set your spell and you believe in your spell and you're not second guessing the work by looking back at it. So when you're working with candle spells to clear something out, the key idea is to dispose of the remains away from you. But when we're working with spells to draw something in, you want to keep those spell remains close. So there are a few different things that you can do. If you are doing work to bring something new to you, you can bury those remains out in front of your home. Or if it's something that you've already got that you want to protect and keep, you can bury those remains in your backyard. If you live in an apartment, you can bury the wax remains in a potted plant and keep them in your home. But you don't have to bury the remains. You can also wrap them up and keep them in an appropriate place. For example, prosperity spell remains can be wrapped up and kept in your place of business or in your desk drawer at work. Love spell remains can be kept under your bed or in your underwear drawer. For spell remains that I am keeping, I like to wrap them up in a piece of cotton cloth rather than foil or paper. Keep the remains until your spell comes true or you wish to end the spell. Now the above methods of dealing with remains can work pretty much generically for any spell remains. But if you've been to my store, you know that one of the things that I specialize in is making beeswax candles. There's a reason for that. Beeswax is a precious and magical ingredient. Bees have to make 1 million trips to flowers to produce just a single ounce of beeswax. Think about that. There is the energy of not only a million flowers in each ounce of beeswax, but the industriousness of the million trips those bees took to make that wax. That is a lot of magical energy. When I work with beeswax in my spells, 
I like to honor the preciousness of the material that I'm working with. And if the spell calls for it, repurpose and reuse that wax instead of throwing it away. The best way to do that is if you have burned a beeswax candle for a spell and there is leftover wax, take that wax, melt it slightly with a warm hair dryer, and then mold that wax into a shape that symbolizes the intent of your spell. For example, if you've done a love spell, you can mold the wax into some little heart shapes. Or if you've done a spell to bring positive attention to yourself, form it into a star or form it into a dollar sign for your prosperity spell work and so on. You get the idea. You can take these talismans and add them to your personal altar, put them in your mojo bag or plant them in the appropriate places in your home or work. By carrying or keeping these talismans, you're keeping the energy of your candle spell going strong. Another kind of candle spell that has some special disposal needs are vigil candles. Vigil candles are the glass encased candles that burn for a week or so. I used to call them when I was a kid, Catholic church candles, because that's where I saw them. So what the heck are we supposed to do with these glass jars when we're done with the spell? You can't leave them in the center of an intersection. There's too much of a littering issue and you don't want to give a car a flat tire. You can't bury them in your yard. They're too big and it would be too hard to bury them. You can't keep them under your mattress or in your underwear drawer. So what the heck can we do with them? With any leftovers that include glass, it is completely appropriate to recycle them. You're being sustainable and appropriate and you're really caring for Mother Earth when you do that. Now, if you have the option, I would recommend putting banishing and clearing vigil candle remains in some distant recycling container and the ones that you are doing to bring something to you in your own recycle bin or one as close to you as possible. Another disposal issue I'm often asked about is for petition papers. You've written out your fabulous petition paper, you've placed it under the candle holder for your spell, and now that the candle is finished, what do you do with the petition? There are a lot of choices. First, you could tuck your petition paper in with whatever candle wax remains and bury it. Leave it at the crossroads or pack it up and put it in your special place where you're going to keep it. Another way that you can work with a petition paper is to keep it separate from whatever else remains. You could put it in your wallet and carry it with you, or you could tuck it away in a drawer or place it in a special jewelry box or stick it in a special book. For example, I can imagine taking a petition paper for love and tucking it away in a book of love poems. How perfect would that be? Another way to deal with petition papers is to burn them. For spells of banishing, this is especially effective. Again, you would want to dispose of the ashes once it's burned, in a place far away from your home. I really recommend, if you are going to burn your petition paper, that you do it over a piece of aluminum foil, and after it gets too hot to hold, dropping it on that foil and letting it burn completely. Wait for that foil to cool, and then you can easily wrap it up and dispose of it far away. But the burning method can also be used for spells where you want to hide the evidence, or Otherwise, don't want to have to hang on to the petition paper for all eternity. If that's the case, you can burn it, but then I would recommend sprinkling the ashes in your front or backyard to keep the energy close to you. Whenever you're doing spell work and you're confronted with leftovers of any kind and don't know what to do, just keep in mind this simple rule of thumb. If it's something you want to get rid of, dispose of it far from you. If it's something you want to come to you, keep the remains close. And really for either kind of spell, you can always just default to leaving your remains at the crossroad. Well, that about does it for this episode of Magic and the Law of Attraction. If you would like to get even more info about spells, then you'll want to check out my YouTube video page at hoodoohowto.com. And that's where you'll see a ton of candle spells and other videos showing how to make magic in your life. Also, please subscribe to the Spell a Week newsletter. And if you do, you'll get a free copy of my gorgeously illustrated ebook, Seven Secrets to Supercharge Your Spell Work. In it, I give a ton of powerful spell tips, not just for candles, but for working with incense, herbs, oils, and more. 
Just go to sevensecretsebook.com and get your free copy today. I want to say another huge, huge, huge thank you to Lachelle for her really great question about how to deal with spell remains. If you have a question about spells, hoodoo, law of attraction, divination, or any other magical or spiritual topic, you can go to magicandthelawofattraction.com, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and submit your questions there. Thank you so much to all the people that have submitted questions. We've got some great episodes coming up. I love reading your questions. And if you are one of the people who gets their question chosen for a future episode, you get a gift certificate to my online store, Madame Pamita's Parlor of Wonders. It's an esoteric emporium, spiritual apothecary, and repository of arcane wisdom. Basically, the Parlor of Wonders is your one-stop online shop for magical supplies, tarot reading, spells, and a absolute ton of free magical instruction. The ingredients for every spell recipe that we mention on Magic and the Law of Attraction are available at parlorofwonders.com. So head over there to check it out. Thank you to this week's fabulous listeners who have left some awesome reviews. I want to give a shout out to Zendi who said, Madam Pamita is wonderful to listen to. She teaches in a plain and easy style. I love that. Easy is good. I am not one for complicated things. So thank you so much, Zendi. Um, I want to say another thank you to CB7120305, who said that this podcast was just what I was looking for without really knowing it was what I was looking for. Isn't it great how we stumble on things that um, really enlighten us? I'm so glad that my podcast was one of those things for you, CB. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Stephanie Ha, who said, I'm not even sure how I found your site and consequently your podcast. I am totally blaming the Fae. I love that. Fairy magic at work leading you to my podcast. Thank you, Stephanie Ha. And Rolo Mama, who says, I can't express how much your Instagram and this podcast have helped me on my own spiritual journey. That's right. I want to remind everyone that I have an Instagram account that I personally put up photos on. And you can find me on Instagram at Madam Pamita, just all one word put together. Super easy to find me. So thank you, Rolo Mama, for bringing that up. Uh, Selena Munoz, I want to say a big thank you to you. It's so nice to get your review where you say, it's nice to have finally found a teacher guide who I enjoy listening and learning from. Well, I appreciate you giving me that shout out. So thank you so much, Selena. And if you, as of course, we, as you know, we have a special podcast of the week. I always pick one that is my favorite of the week and give that person a free 30 minute reading. So our special review of the week was from Unicorn Posse. Just right away, the name Unicorn Posse. I already love this review. And Unicorn Posse says, my eyes have been struggling with the smoke from incense for years. I had stopped using it, which is why I am so thrilled with the helpfulness of this podcast. It taught me about smokeless incense. That's right. We have to go back and listen to that incense podcast uh, if you haven't listened to that episode yet. Just one of the many eye-opening tools I've gotten from listening. I already made a batch and relish it. This podcast is so valuable because Pamita thinks outside the box to account for all levels and needs. Anyone can get something out of listening. Even if you're not into magic or attraction, Pamita's funny, so you'll get a laugh. Love that. I don't know if this podcast was a very funny one, but we had some, definitely had some good information here. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Unicorn Posse. Send your unicorns over to me via email and we'll get you your uh, free 30-minute reading with me. I want to thank you so much for that. So, hey, you person out there who has not put up a review on iTunes yet, if you want a 30-minute tarot reading with me, then you need to go to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and post a written review. Let me know what you like and what you want more of. We'll do it all again next week and give away another prize because I love giving away prizes. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm looking forward to next week when we'll be talking about how do I work with a vigil candle? I love it. We told how to dispose of a vigil candle in this episode. Well, how do you do one in the first place? We're going to talk about that next week. 
So until next time, this is Madame Pamita saying, keep making your life the most magical adventure ever. 